All right, and welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. Today we have the Harman feed system right here. So we have a, basically the entire feed system. We'll be going through a few things. First video here that I want to do is going to be focusing on the burn pot and replacement of that burn pot. So we're going to go ahead and kind of get started on that. Just going to show you how we remove that burn pot uh, from the system, uh, the importance of the gasket that goes in place, and then putting the new burn pot in place on the unit. So let's get to it. All right. So main tool that I'm going to need here is a half inch. I can either do that with a socket and a ratchet. Otherwise, I have a wrench here. Sometimes these bolts right here, and there's four bolts that hold the burn pot uh, to basically the feed system right here. Sometimes those can be pretty hard and in place. So if you're having a tough time budging these nuts right here, I suggest soaking them down for an hour or so with WD-40. See if you can break them then. Still having difficulty, maybe grab a little pencil torch, try heating those up uh, until you're able to kind of crack them loose. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here with a half inch wrench. And we just have two on either side. Pull these two off, make sure that we grab these locking washers that we have on there. We don't want to misplace those. Right, set that off to the side. Pivot it this way. We'll grab those other ones there. The burn pot's going to kind of move forward a little bit as you're taking off those final nuts there. At this point, our burn pot assembly will come off. Now, it's only coming out this far. And the reason is, is because I have our igniter yet in place. So again, we have these uh, just two wing nut openings right here on the front end of the fire pot where our igniter is going to be located. I'm just going to reposition the video a little bit. We're going to loosen the igniter right here. We're going to disconnect the wires from the back so we can fully pull this burn pot right out. All right, so there's a little zip tie in the back that was keeping these wires taut, our blue and our yellow for our igniter wires. So I've gone ahead and I have snipped that little zip tie and I've been able to kind of pull these wires a little bit from the front so that we can go ahead and disconnect our igniter element. Sometimes these are tight. And we may need a pliers as we uh, wiggle these out. And from there, we just have two 516 bolts that are holding the igniter and the cradle cage inside of that burn pot opening. This one's being a little, a little stubborn, but we'll get it. All right. Now our igniter wires are removed right here. Our burn pot is fully out of the unit. So again, uh, over time, if we're noticing anything where we have any kind of, uh, you know, warpage, breakage, anything like that with a burn pot, uh, we're definitely going to have, you know, some noticeable issues with the fire and the efficiency of the fire, maybe the, uh, uh, the overall function and so forth of the ignition element that's in there. So important that we're regularly cleaning, scraping this burn pot, uh, again, just going through our normal maintenance with something like this. But when the time comes uh, where the burn pot needs to be replaced, uh, this is the process on how we do it. So once we have the burn pot off right here, uh, you know, again, we're going to expose the cavity right here where the igniter wires are coming through. And then we're going to expose the actual feed shaft where our auger shaft is as well. And then again, this is the mounting or the docking gasket uh, that is going to go between the frame right here and the burn pot. 
This is a very important gasket to replace anytime that we remove the burn pot. A lot of times we're gonna see cracks, we're gonna see wears, we're gonna see splits and something like this. You know, this one overall looks pretty well intact, but we're just gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. So, I'm just gonna gently pull that off. And I've got our replacement right here. Again, they call this a uh, like a lyotherm gasket or uh, like a paper gasketing material. Same thing here for safety. Uh, I could always put on a pair of gloves. I could always have on a, a mask or some kind of ventilator uh, right here to make sure I'm not breathing any particles that are in the air. But uh, it's a fragile gasket, so we want to you know we want to be careful with it. Uh, we don't want to be rough with it. Again, just going to place it right over those four bolts right there, and we're going to go ahead and basically bolt the burn pot right back on there. So I'm gonna first go ahead and, uh, and reconnect these wires. Obviously for the video here, I'm using the same burn pot that I just took off. Uh, if I was replacing it into a new burn pot, I am just going to pull off these two screws right here that are holding the igniter cradle in place. And I am going to reattach the igniter and the igniter cradle into the new burn pot that we put in place. Being that we're just going to attach this one, we're gonna leave it right there. With our igniter wires, it doesn't matter which connects to which just making continuity there so get these wires back on the yellow and on the blue and again i will end up feeding those through from the back get it nice and taut just like that and we will place the burn pot on and just one of the uh, lock washers obviously first and we do want to tighten this down evenly. That is an important aspect of the burn pot. So again, I'm just going to get a couple threads on there. Get the next one on. And again, as you're working with this on the inside of the firebox, you know, great to have some magnetic lights. Again, a lot of it is uh, having the right tools and having the right amount of light so you're actually able to see what you're doing. Like I said, sometimes these nuts can be uh, can be a, a bear to get off. So if that's the case, soak them down a little bit first with some lubricant. Still having some struggles, hit them with like a pencil torch, heat them up a little bit until you're able to get those cracked. But other than that, pretty straightforward on the replacement of a uh, Harman burn pot. And again, uh, having that gasket properly in place right there and uh, the elements on our igniter. So now that I have those hand tightened, I'm just gonna go ahead and get these snugged down. Same thing, kinda like a car tire here, I am going to <clears throat> get these just kinda snugged. I'm gonna do them in opposites or, or diagonals. So kinda snug. We'll move over to the other side over here. get this one nice and snugged up and that's about snug we'll go into the opposite corners here Thing not, not tightening them not cranking them down yet Like that now I can go ahead and really tighten them up and with the burn pot right here you do want to have them nice and tight All right pretty tight do that opposite corner over there again. Again, still not wrenching them down. Just getting them uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter there. And 
last one up here. Nice job evenly tightening that burn pot down. Nice seal of that gasket all the way through to the actual uh, auger throat right there. So at this point, I'm just going to give them one last little, one last little crank. I don't need to torque them in or anything like that, but we do want this tight. Just like that. Okay, go ahead and put back on and again obviously if you had to pull out the igniter which is you know more than likely what you had to do once you have the new igniter mounted up in here have the 516s in place we'll just put the little access cover back on there and we just tighten those wing nuts down and that is the replacement of a Harman burn pot any questions concerns variances that you're seeing you need some tips you need some tricks that's what we're here for always happy to help just leave a comment in the uh, in the video here below, and uh, always happy to assist and uh, make sure that you're 100%. Thanks again for joining us for another session of Pellet Tech 101.